to address the issues facing Tennesseans today. From 10 News, this is Inside Tennessee. Good morning and welcome to Inside Tennessee along with my colleague John North. I'm John Becker. We hope you're having a good start to your Sunday morning. We are continuing our interviews with candidates for the general election. For fairness sake, we did invite the current mayor to join us for this broadcast. Glenn Jacobs team said it was not fitting in his schedule. So we are pleased to have with us for the full broadcast today. Debbie Helsley, who is the Democratic candidate for mayor. If you want to hear uh, Glenn Jacobs, he was on with us just a couple of weeks ago talking about the budget. Uh, so, Ms. Helsley, a little background on you. You are a fifth generation Knox Countyan. Uh, you also worked for Bell South for more than 30 years, wore a lot of hats in that as well as union boss. You've been active in your neighborhood coalition. Your website says you are uniquely prepared for the role of Knox County Mayor. Why do you say that? Because of the, all the positions I've held, and thank you for having me, by the way. Uh, the positions I've held in the Neighborhood Association and leadership positions in, in the union, and I've, I've, I've served on city board, civil service merit board. I chaired that for eight years. Um, I just think I have the experience to do it. And so what would you say is the top issue facing Knox County? Well, hmm, public education, the, the top issue facing Knox County, I think, is always going to be public education, which the mayor has little to do with. I understand that, but he does have, you know, he or she has a bully pulpit. But at this point, I think land use is a major issue. Yeah, every corner of this county is really agitated about land use and all the developer freedom that they have to come in and decimate their neighborhoods. And they're not consulting the people who already live here. And I think that is a really huge issue if, you go, if you're out talking to people. We'll get to land use in a second, but let's start with education okay. because about 60 cents okay. of every dollar that the county spends goes to uh, Knox County Schools. And we just saw a budget passed recently where the mayor and uh, county commission signed off on the budget that the superintendent, Bob Thomas, outgoing superintendent, wanted. Uh, is there anything differently you would have liked to have seen, anything different you would have liked to have seen in that school budget? Other than being able to bring the teacher's salaries up to to a level to where we don't continue to lose them to, to the surrounding counties, that would be helpful. I mean, it doesn't help if people can go just across to Blount County or to Anderson County and make more money. Is there a figure that you've got in mind in terms of like where or how you would help boost or support boosting teachers' salaries? A figure? No, I just think they need to be comparable to surrounding counties. You shouldn't be able to pick off our educators when they only have, would have to drive, you know, 10 or 15 miles extra to get there. Let me, let's go back to uh, a thread that you threw out there in regards to land use, because we've certainly mm -hmm. here at WBIR heard concerns and some complaints from yeah. uh, residents in South Knox County. We've heard it in Northeast Knox mm -hmm. County, out west, and that is, uh, hey, uh, we are starting to have developments that we feel like are, are encroaching on our quality of life. They are increasing our traffic or posing traffic problems. They're doing all kinds of other things, straining infrastructure. Is that what you're talking about? And how do you fix that if you are the Knox County Mayor? Well, first of all, if you talk to the people who, if you talk to the current residents of those areas, it really makes a big difference. I, I don't, there's been a real shift in what the planning staff recommends. It used to, when planning staff would recommend a certain number of, of units per acre and pick a number, I don't know, say five. Then the appointed commissioners would usually go with less than that. And now it's reversed. The planners are saying three and the appointed folks are saying five. And I understand we do have an issue in Knox County and population is, is booming but you you can't tr you can't run over the people who are already here i think you have to consider them and i know out at dry hollow in south Knox county they basically were told that there was nothing they could do about it well so, um wh what could be done about it then i mean here let me i'm gonna play devil's advocate i'm a developer okay, okay, i'm ahead. buying the land sure. i'm filling in if you will because that's a lot of what we're starting to see in knox county is infill development mm -hmm. of tracks that have sat empty for many many years and people are sort of used to it being 
kind of their property, if you will, that they can use or it's for their birds or what have you. It's just there. And now some of that's not happening. If I'm a developer, I'm like, hey, you know, I've got a project. It meets what's required by the books. Why shouldn't I be allowed to put it in? I think we should require more of developers. I mean, they they make a lot of campaign contributions to our current mayor and to a lot of commission, but they don't live here. They just build and most of them just build and leave. So why can you not require them? And I'll throw this out there. It just depends on obviously where the development is, but sidewalks. If you're giving, if you're making the lot so small, kids don't have a, children don't have a place to play, then at least give them a sidewalk to, to play hopscotch on. Well, let's stay in the Dry Hollow community because it's my mm -hmm. understanding that there was some compromise that we saw between the homeowners who raised those concerns that John mentioned about right. traffic and mm -hmm. density. And the developers listened in that case and said, we will reduce the number, that, the density, if you will, of that property. Mm -hmm. um, the neighbors in reaction to that said, it wasn't what we wanted, but it's better than what was going to happen. Is that an example of something that was positive when it comes to development? I think so. I think, I hope I, I hate to quote numbers when I don't have it in front of me, but I think they dropped, got it dropped from like 255 to 180. That's a lot of housing units. So I think they felt like it was a semi win. I'm sure it's not totally what they wanted, but at least it was progress. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, th I think if you work with them, but it, how long did that take though? It definitely took some time mm -hmm. and negotiation um, and some mm -hmm. action by neighbors, certainly. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the big picture though, what I've heard from developers is there is a lot of complaints about traffic. And what developers, to John's point, are saying is, well, there have been a lot of undeveloped tracks in our community for quite some time, and now we're starting to see the need and the demand for them. So that's happening. Mm -hmm. What the county should have done long ago is anticipate that growth. And instead of doing uh, a two-lane road, like we're seeing out in Hardin Valley, they should have put in a four-lane mm -hmm. road to begin with to be able to absorb what everyone knew was coming. Now this transportation planning group is underway right now that we talked about with Mayor Jacobs, and he seems to think that's going to give them uh, a roadmap for how to plan in the future. Do you agree with that? For future planning, yeah, but what are you going to do about now? Did he say what he was going to do about like right now? He did, he did say that there are discussions just like the Dry Hollow community. We asked him if we'll see more of that, and I, I believe his answer was yes. We'll probably see that give and take between developers mm -hmm. and communities who are trying to figure out what shape their neighborhood's going to take. I mean, can they not use, we got, there was the bipartisan infrastructure bill that was passed in D.C. that's got money coming here. It's kind of late to the party, but that would help, right? You tell me, have you looked at that? Well, and I mean, yeah, I mean, there's money coming here. We need to use it. Now, I don't know for some of these communities that have already got developments there. I mean, it, it's, I guess better late than never. Okay. Well, we're going to take a quick break on Inside Tennessee, back with more of our conversation. We'll talk about law enforcement and other priorities that the Democratic candidate for Knox County Mayor has when we come back.